Hey, what's up YouTube? We're going to be doing a full in-depth review of my stereo system. Um, I've made a few other videos with uh, music on them and, and it's been pulled. So this time you're going to have to uh, listen to me talking while I show you the system and then I'll put on some, some music that I don't think will be recognized. I've been using easily recognizable hip-hop. So without further ado, here's the system. So starting at the top, I've got the Music Hall MMF 2.2. This is an entry level um, turntable, and um, but it's still a hi-fi audiophile piece, and it's the same as the projects, which you'll see um, the tone arm is project. And this was recently upgraded with the Hanna SL moving coil cartridge, and I have that off the record as you can see right now. And one upgrade we did on here is we put the Acra plat. This is an acrylic platter. Um, so the uh, the cartridge we're using here is the HANA again, moving coil stereo cartridge, and uh, it was replaced by the Music Hall Tracker. I mean, it it replaced the Music Hall Tracker, which which came on this turntable, and I got a lot of mileage out of, and I thought it sounded good until I heard this. So this is um, this was able to be purchased because we have the new C twenty five hundred um, preamplifier, which we'll get to in one second. But that's the you know, the only drawback on this <clears throat> is is you can't. I have a I have a, um, a tone arm cable that I want to upgrade, but you can't upgrade the tone arm cable on this turntable. You're kind of stuck with what you got. So the next upgrade path is going to be this, and I'm thinking of getting a VPI. I was going to get a Prime Signature, but I'm thinking of getting the VPI Avenger. So let me know in the comments section what you think I should upgrade to. I think the VPA Avenger is probably where it's at at about the ten thousand dollar price point. But this this whole turntable outfitted as it is is um i think it's 500 for the turntable 100 for the acre plat and it was almost a thousand for the needle uh the cartridge so we're at i don't know no it was more like 800 for the for the cartridge so probably 1200 dollars for this setup so a real nice turntable setup for 1200 dollars. moving down to the next level here this is my wonderful adcom gfa 555 power amplifier that now I'm using to power the speakers in the kitchen. You can see it's a Nelson Pass design. Very uh, very positive reviews and for the money. I picked that up for 300 bucks. Great money, money well spent. Now we get down to the Macintosh C2500 tube preamp. As you can see there's the tubes. I don't know if you can get a good look at that. Here's the tubes, as you can see, glowing. As we got the tubes all warmed up, and then you got them in focus for you. Um, so this is the C2500 tube preamplifier. Uh, these retail for, I think, around $7,000, and it's the brain of the whole system. And as you can see, this output makes sure the AdCom's turned on. And we've got another AdCom on the floor, which is running the uh, the uh, living room and dining room area. So we got a total of three amplifiers here. So in addition to the C2500, it's it's on it's on its a uh, standard um, uh, tubes that came with it. So we might do an upgrade one time. We'll make a video of uh, what we're going to get and, and upgrade the tubes. See if we notice a difference in sound. Finally, here. Last but not least is the mighty MC302 power amplifier, 300 watts per channel. Um, this I bought from new, got a pretty good deal on it. It was about $6,000. Um, as you can see, it's got all its specifications printed on the top of it. Dynamic headroom frequency response. And all this... The Macintosh information, if, if the Macintosh products are made in Binghamton, New York, so we're in Buffalo, this is just a few hours down the New York State Thruway where these are made by hand. And we're running that. Um, now let's look at the wiring a little bit. <clears throat> now we've got, we would have had all AudioQuest back here, RCAs. So these are, these are going to the three amplifiers. So this is going to the mains. We got fully balanced XLR, AudioQuest Red River cables. Then we got 
audio request Red River RCA is going to the ADCOM because the ADCOM does not have XLR um, balanced inputs on it. This is running to the ADCOM that's on the floor. This is still my old monster cable stuff, and I got another cable that's <coughs> waiting um, because it's too short. But once I have the setup the way I want it, we're not always going to have that on the floor over there. Then I can go to the shorter ADCOM wire. Uh, but very nice stuff, and as you can get a good look at the some look at the back of the preamp and all the inputs. It's it's packed. It's uh, and one one other thing we got back there, as you can see, uh, the Belkin RCA is going to one of the outputs just so I can plug a cell phone in when I don't feel like uh, you know getting using the turntable and everything. We could just use a cell phone if there's a song that we don't have. Um, and as you can see, it's all plugged into the back. And then it goes out of the MC302. Um, we've got full audio quest cables. Uh, Rocket 33. Audio quest Rocket 33 speakers, speaker cables. And, and I'll tell you what, this is one of the biggest upgrades I made. I've noticed a dramatic difference in the bass response when I got these um, in particular. So once the bass response kicked in, I didn't need to get a subwoofer anymore. Here we have a record cleaning machine. It's the Okinoki. Picked that up. I think that was 600 bucks. Uh, well worth it. Don't use it a lot because I play a lot of new new material now. Since uh, with the with the renaissance of records and how you can get them new everywhere. Um, and then the speakers. Polk LSIM 707s with the piano black finish. And people mistake them for uh, Ravel Ultima Salons, which is fine by me. But um. We're, we've had these for a few years now. We're probably going to keep them um, through the turntable upgrade. But then the next major upgrade, when I decided to go with monoblock amplifiers and um, uh, probably replace these with Bowers and Wilkins 8, 800 diamonds. And that is the stereo. So let's let's see if we can get away with putting something on. Using less than three three watts here, as you can see. It's Christmas morning. We got it turned down. So that's the hi-fi stereo guys. It's a I say we're roughly in about thirty thousand on this thing and once we upgrade the turntable we'll be more at like forty and then the next biggest upgrade path will be speakers and then with monoblocks be up to like eighty. So uh that's kind of my my next plan on this. So just uh if you like this content, like, comment, subscribe. Um We'll be making more exciting videos as we as we modify this stereo system. As you can see, there's many components that go to it. But stay tuned for the turntable upgrade, guys. All right, thanks for watching.